What do you get when you combine over 125 years of camera lens heritage and the latest in autofocus technology? The Zeiss Bodice. Engineered exclusively for Sony mirrorless full-frame sensor cameras, the Zeiss Bodice delivers perfect corner-to-corner -corner image quality. With enhanced protection against the elements, the Zeiss Bodice is built to help you push past life's obstacles. Zeiss Bodice, the perfect lens for wherever your passion leads you. This is Zeiss Presents Full Exposure, the weekly resource for news, trends, and the people who influence the world of photography and cinematography. Hosted by veteran photographer and filmmaker Jim Camp. On episode 36, we sat down with New York-based Italian-born cinematographer Valentina Caniglia. Encouraged by her dad when he gave her a camera at a young age, she was drawn first to still photography and then evolved to film storytelling. Growing up in Naples, her influences range from legendary DP Vittorio Storaro to directors Stanley Kubrick and Lena Wertmuller. Widely accepted statistics say that while women account for around 51% of filmgoers, some around 4% are directors and only 3% of cinematographers are women. It's no wonder that Valentina speaks passionately about expanding opportunities for women in the film industry. Along with shooting features, shorts, music videos, and commercials for HBO, Canal Plus, Rai, Showtime, and Netflix, Valentina has also dedicatedly supported social issue groups, shooting nonfiction branded content for Planned Parenthood and the Children's Aid Society. She was also featured in The American Cinematographer for her camera work on the dramatic short, The Stand. Since I was a child, I, always, I was always fascinated about the image and about actually the photography, uh, the still photography in that mm -hmm. time. So, you know, my dad uh, brought me like, you know, a camera, a Kodak camera, which, you know, by that time it was kind of like the, um, the role was, the film was in obviously in film stock and there was, uh, you know, a disc. So you had to actually put a, like, you know, the film on a disc and you could shoot only 15, you know, uh, picture. And that was very expensive. So I was like really like, you know, managing in a way how I could actually choose the right picture so that I would not waste anything. And that's how it all started. And I remember that I always, I, I was always, you know, with this camera in my, uh, you know, in my hand and wherever I was going, I was always like, you know, shooting something that I really found more interesting. Uh, so that's why, uh, you know, I think, you know, it was really natural for me to just like decided that I wanted to really like, you know, be a photographer, but more than a photographer, I wanted to really tell stories with like, you know, kind of, uh, you know, uh, content as well and decided that I wanted to be a cinematographer, which by that time, you know, uh, no one really thought about it, what was the cinematographer mm. because everybody were like, okay, what do you want to be? And I. I remember I saw actually like the a movie is called The Conformist. It's an Italian movie uh, shot by Storaro. And uh, whenever when I saw that movie, you know, because you know my dad wanted to be a director, but you know mm. he was in business, so he had to follow like you know the family business. So he knew more than any anyone I ever met oh, wow. about the retrospective of films, about anything that was really like you know interesting by that time. So he introduced me to like a lot of movies. And uh, one of those was The Conformist. And when I saw it, I thought, you know what, well, I wanted to be wherever this guy is doing. Mm. And I don't know what it is. I don't know how they call it, but I just want to do what this person is doing with, uh, you know, with the image. And my dad was like, okay, so you want to be a cinematographer? And he said, are you sure you don't want to be a director? Because, you know, as a woman DP, it's, uh, you know, there are not so many and it's going to be a long way. And I say to myself, I say, well, uh, if it takes long, it's OK. I really want to do, you know, I want to be a DP, a cinematographer. So that was like, you know, the one thing that I knew about well, it. Well, plus, it sounds like your dad was a real influence on you in yeah. the sense of mm -hmm. being in love with movies. Yeah, he, he grew up with movie. He was like uh, a movie buff for all kind of oh, level. Yeah. And uh, what I like about it that he uh, knew more about all the behind the scene mm. and how, you know, all the construction of a movie was made more mm. than the movie itself, even though he watched that, but he, he, he could really like choose well about the content. And uh, most of the movie that he was watching was more like, you know, the, as we call in Europe, the cinema voter. And so it was more like, you know, the content where, you know, was something behind that. And, uh, and not a lot of comedy, but much more like, you know, drama, thriller, 
and sci-fi and he, he loved Kubrick, he loved like, you know, a lot mm. of like, you know, contemporary director in that time, they, they were very mm -hmm. like in kind of avant-garde mm -hmm. as well. Right now, I don't have an influence from films, but I have an influence from actually like artists, more like from paintings, mm. uh, because that's, you know, the approach that I usually like, you know, look at it because, uh, you know, I like to read the script as I was, you know, mentioning before. Mm -hmm. And I like to actually like, you know, read it first as an audience, first as if it's a point of view of an audience. So I try to actually really understand the characters and uh, develop the state of mind of a character. And to that, then I read the second time and I see it as, uh, as a DP and how I can actually translate the emotion through like, you know, the visuals and see how I can actually like, you know, really give something that a cinematographer can support and director for uh, and tell a story with that, mm -hmm. you know, because I don't think it's only about a beautiful image. I think it's about mostly about telling a story and how you tell a story and how it grows on the visual aspect, but also like, you know, on a cinematic, a cinematic you know, perspective as well. Uh, but it also, I think what, what I like about it that I, I can really say like the emotion through the camera. And that's when the camera becomes one of the character. And that's what, you know, I'm more influenced by, mm. by, you know, the life around me, but mostly about artists, about painting as well. You know, like uh, contemporary painting and also like, you know, really classical painting as well. And not only about the lighting, because I think there is something that we can, if we watch closely, there's always like, you know, something that really focus on details. And I think uh, when you're a filmmaker, and when you're cinematographer, you really start to look at details uh, more closely. Sometimes, you know, gesture is more important than actually word. And uh, maybe like, you know, uh, sometimes like a close up of the eyes, it's much more significant than basically like, you know, a wide shot where everybody talk or maybe you don't need to really like, you know, express that in a different like, you know, mm. way of like, in a verbal way. You can actually like, you know, just mm. see the visuals. Mm. Uh, I think that's what a director also like, you know, likes about my style. And, uh, and that's what I really appreciate it because they see that. They see that actually I really read the script and I go with the emotion of the characters. Because I really analyze and say, okay, you know, uh, I think he, you know, director or maybe the writer wrote this and give life to these characters. So how me as a camera, I can contribute in that. And now I can translate, you know, like the state of mind of a character on uh, like, you know, visual to visuals uh, with the choice of lenses or the choice of lighting and also like the camera movement as well. So it's all a combination of that. But it's important to also like, you know, be with the director and analyze all like these aspects. I like to take risks. I like to actually explore more. And especially when there are like, you know, films where you can, and then of course there are films that you cannot. Mm -hmm. So you really like, you know, balance that out. Uh, because I think it's a collaboration, but also you there for a director mostly. And it's actually nice that you actually like give some suggestion in how could be if we do it another way, or maybe how it could be if we, we do actually like in certain way. Mm. So yeah, I have a lot of flexibility on that. You talked yeah. about you talked about uh, uh, just scratch the surface about lenses mm. before, you know. And as mm -hmm. you're you know, as you're reading something, reading a script, and figuring out, you know, first round you're reading it one way, yeah. Second round you're reading mm -hmm. it more as a DP. Uh, how do you get into that zone of thinking about lenses mm. uh, in that second round of reading a script? I think uh, because uh, in reality, I when I read the script, this is funny, but I do that. Basically, each scenes, I imagine, like, you know, in my mind, how in a way they could be. Maybe because, you know, like when I got to the point that I read the script, I already like talk a little bit with the director, or maybe they just send me a script and then they wanted to know my impression. So what I do, I kind of like, you know, already put myself like in a kind of imagination 
and how you know each scene could be in relationship on the story and mostly on the character as well how maybe like a specific character would feel in that moment so how i could actually like interpret that maybe you know if she feels very sad maybe you know i probably would put it like a tighter lens to see her emotion because what i really want to emphasize on that is that for me as a cinematographer i really try to tell the emotion now it is an emotion about human or is it an emotion about object or is it an emotion about peace because it represents something for the location or for anything else but i still like you know to see i still like to you know uh show through the camera, through the movement, and through the lighting, the emotion that it's it's about the project as mm -hmm. well. So I think you, uh, the way I do it, I just imagine that each scene could be something that the way I would do it, and then I tell the director, and then you know we explore together. Or there is another side where the director really knows how you know he or she wants, uh, and then at that point, you know, I just go along with them and I support them. And maybe I give some new ideas for that kind of, you know, side as mm. well. So, yeah. Yeah, you you um you have uh, your your filmography is pretty intense. So you have yeah. a lot of you have a lot of projects you've uh -huh. worked on, and there's a lot of socially mm -hmm. responsible, active kind of films in there. All right. Uh, in particular, I'm thinking of The Stand. Mm -hmm. um, yes. And it, so, talk about that for a moment, mm -hmm. and just how. In the, in the sphere of lenses, how you sort of approach yeah. that look-wise? Well, the stand, uh, for example, was supposed to be shot in Africa because, uh, you know, the story is basically based on, uh, like, a terrorist attack on a bus, which happened, actually, like, you know, in Africa. And uh, But the director, like, when she wrote it, she adapted from an article, she called me up and she saw another film they were, I shot uh, for in Louisiana because we shot in Louisiana instead. And basically, like, you know, it was a period film where I, in that year, I actually won as the best cinematographer. It's called, uh, on the Louisiana Film Festival, and it's called Madeleine Hoyle. And it was a period film. And she saw it, and she got really, like, you know, attached to the image. And she said that, you know, she felt something when she watched yeah, the movie. Yeah, was a very warm yeah. looking film. Yeah, it was a very warm looking film, but it was because in reality it was supposed to be all in candle. Take, right. And it was a love story about like, you know, interrace, you know, like, so mm. there was, you know, like a very, uh, you know, during the civil war mm. as well. So a there was a very emotional and very strong in one side and very like, you know, lovely in the other side. Mm. And, you know, when she saw that movie, uh, she really liked that and she called me up and she said, you know what, I really would like you to shoot it. So she, she's, she already had a, like, you know, a way how she wanna, uh, but she really wanted to be open to all the input. And uh, what I like about it that I say to her, I say, how about considering, because we see like, you know, this big field, we see even though it's Louisiana, we cheat in Louisiana for Africa, but you know, like we see that the story is in the bus, but outside there is all the landscape and there is actually like something that, you know, makes it even more stronger with the color, with the kind of beige color and everything, mm -hmm. if we go anamorphic. So that we can see all the spectrum and whatever happened inside the bus and what's happening outside as well. Mm -hmm. So at that point, you know, she was very, uh, you know, she liked the idea and, uh, you know, she just tell me, Okay, so let's do that, and we explore, you know, a way to actually different way of anamorphic as well. Tell, tell uh, maybe some of the people that are listening that don't know what anamorphic mm. is. Just to anamorphic is basically a 2.40 aspect uh, ratio, and uh, those are lenses that, you know, basically you can shoot it with a 2.40 uh, aspect ratio as well. And what I wanted to actually emphasize is that, you know, when I went to Panavision, because we rented from Panavision, there was this wonderful, uh, you know, man that works there. Uh, his name is James Finn. And he actually, like, showed me all the, you know, um, anamorphic lenses that he had. Uh, and I chose the CineVision. And I, maybe I should not say that because I'm on its eyes. No, it's okay. Yeah. But, you know, like, uh, it was interesting to actually see that, you know, the look of different anamorphic lens, they could really give me like, you know, what I uh, what I like it in a way, and you can choose from that. So that was a good mm. way to go mm. in a way, so, yeah. 
So then compare those, mm. uh, compare um, uh, uh, what we were just talking about, mm. the stand, with uh, Detained. Uh -huh. Because that's another uh -huh. true story, yeah. documentary yes. style narrative. Uh -huh. Yeah, uh, which had a com yeah. completely different look. Yeah, Detained was a, it's actually like a project that I shot last year. It's a recent project. It's not yet. Uh, it's not out yet. But uh, it was a really like you know a new way to explore like you know a situation that was happening like you know right now recently. And there was like you know a ban about the Muslim. So the story is concentrated only in the airport when you know brother and sister ca came. And they are like stopped by the costume. They had legal right to exactly. come. Exactly. They had a le legal right to come. They had a visa. But, you know, there was like, you know, I think it was like uh, for 48 hours, there was a ban for the Muslim. And basically they mm. were stopped and they were, uh, you know, like sent back just because, you know, they decided like that. So um, what I like about it in reality, it's not really shot as a documentary. It's actually really like, you know, uh, a narrative film. But it's shot very with a well-known, like you know, perspective in mind. Where would you shoot it? We shot in the interior, York. interior, so in the interior we shot in the office, in an office of like you know, uh, editing office. Uh -huh. uh, the actually the digital DTV office. Oh, really? <laughs> so they had it looked like an airport. Uh -huh. Really looked like you know you got like you know, all the. But the color palette was very much like a. Uh, like the color palette, you know, was a choice that uh, you know I talk with the director a lot about that because in reality there was a predominance of green. Green, yes. And uh, we decided to do that because, you know, in that moment, all the characters, they were very, like, you know, greedy. There was something about mm. them that their soul became a kind of like, you know, in, in, in the beginning it's actually changing because when they landed, it's very, it's more realistic. So you see like, you know, the whole way of the airport and they all like, you know, happy. But then when the costume started to stop and take them in the, in the room, everything changed because it's like now they are in their world and right. now they are in a greeting world and they're right. kind of afraid. Right. But still there is something that, you know, they want to struggle yeah. against the Did you shoot, did you get to shoot in there, any of those, that stuff in an airport? Uh, no, what? we didn't because we didn't have a you permit. Just, you just had to double yeah. something. No, we had to actually like, you know, cheat the whole way mm -hmm. that we had uh, like in another place in the school. Mm -hmm. We shot in a school in Queens ah, that looked uh. like, you know, the airport. <laughs> okay. Maybe, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It was, it was effective. interesting. Was very effective. Yeah, very interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so what's there's a there's a lot of stuff you told me about mm. that we can't see because everything is in yeah. po is in post right now. Mm -hmm. But tell us a little bit about what you're what you've got in the uh, in the crock pot now mm -hmm. that you're cooking. Okay, so there is uh, a movie uh, that uh, actually I shot three movies, and uh, the first one it's uh, it's called uh, Road by Goners, and uh, it's uh, and uh, LGBT mm -hmm. a movie and basically like uh, it's a story it's a love story about two women that you know it, it's very surreal in a way but it's very like conceptual in in another way and it's interesting because I think you know lighting wise the way I approach it uh, I really like you know thought about it that every frame was like a canvas and so basically I started to really think about it how I could actually like you know like that in a way that doesn't look like a painting, but it looks like it's more surreal and still integrate the story as well. So what I did, uh, I started to think about, you know, my color palette, what I had available with, and also like, you know, I started to talk with the costume and also with production design. And that was like a very good understanding about what kind of, you know, color palette I could use. So I'm a DP that, I like to bring also my own, you know, like uh, um, things on set, meaning that, you know, because I travel a lot, example, you know, when I went to India, I actually decided to, you know, use the muslin and really dye the muslin in a color and then making like, you know, the red muslin or maybe the blue muslin, depending on the skin color. So basically like, you know, I, I always experiment. So mus d yeah. dyed muslin as modifiers? Yeah, basically what I did, uh, I actually like, you know, dye in a color and uh, I have my own like, you know, kind of muslin, which is red, blue, green, depending on, you know, the different color mm. scheme and, uh, you know, the, the, the texture as well. Because I shot it, uh, you know, all around the world. 
and obviously like you know I shot it with like you know a uh, darker skin color and also lighter skin color and you know I see that certain light they're really not really appealing for that kind of you know color and uh, so I started to develop my own like you know technique and also like you know my own like you know uh, things so that I say, you know what, well, if I use maybe red on the darkest color, it looks much better because mm. there is less, less magenta and then it pops up a mm. little bit more. Another technique that I use a lot, it's actually I started when I, you know, when I have actually frame, I started to lighting from the back and then I finish from the front. Mm. I never started from front lighting. I always do the opposite. It basically I approach it as if it's like a painting. So I started to analyze what's my key light. Mm -hmm. And usually like, you know, I say, okay, I want to shoot it to eight or I want to shoot it too. But I really want to, I always start it from the back so that, you know, the frame becomes more like, you know, three dimensional, even though it's two dimensional, but it looks more like there is depth. Right. And I like that because it's a concept that I developed all my life because I grew up in a place where art is all around me. And, you know, in Italy, wherever you walk, you basically yeah. always like, you know, counting to a painting or something that, you know, maybe like a monument. And uh, I noticed that, you know, since I was a child, that the artists, that they always like, you know, really develop this scheme of like, you know, two dimensional and make them believe that it's like more two dimensional. And the technique was actually like, you know, to really mm. light in from the mm. back mm. and then finish with the front if I need to. Maybe I don't need it. Mm -hmm. So it depends on the with, story. Uh, with some negative film. Exactly. Or, uh, it depends uh, on the spread, story yeah. as well. So I, I never say never because, you know, some people say I never use this kind of lighting or I never yeah. use this kind of lens. I am always open because I think, you know, technology is actually there for us and we should be able to, you know, really support technology, but also be really intelligent to know how to use it in our, like, you know, advantage. And mm. example, you know, when I light the eyes, I have my set of knife and I'm not cooking with that. I'm actually like, you know, really like, you know, use it. It's like chicken knife, uh, kitchen knife, sorry. And basically like, you know, I, I use it to just give an highlights on the eyes. So what I do, I actually shoot a light into the, in the, the knife, knife and I actually have like a Where's the knife of, sitting on the mat box or something? No, usually it's like on a C stand, uh -huh. but you know, this protection. Uh -huh. So I put it maybe like in a tennis ball uh -huh. and I literally use like, you know, the kitchen line, knife, you know, like the set of kitchen line uh -huh. knife. <laughs> and cool. uh, I use the, you know, and I see, you know, most of my, the first time I got it was like, are you, what, what, what are we doing? You know, so the gaffer that they don't know me, they're like, why you need... I'm going to make you all something I later. say, yeah, <laughs> they say, but why do you need... Sometimes I forget it. And then I say, you know what, well, ask if in the kitchen or maybe if they have a knife, can you get a knife? And, then like, and they're like, what do you want to do? You want to kill me? With that? <laughs> so it's you like... You just shoot you know, like a little Fresnel into it or something? Yeah, or? like usually I shoot it like, you know, either Dido light, so maybe mm -hmm. Fresnel. Mm -hmm. It depends, like, you know, what kind of power no, I have. And then I just, you know... Just, just turn it of, and I give it on the of, side, not uh, even in the front because I don't want to bother the actor. Mm -hmm. I want to, uh, you know, this is another thing for me. I really want to have the actor that they feel comfortable because hmm. for me, performance is very important. Like hmm. in a way that director gets his or her performance uh, and I don't want to stand in their way. I want that the actor feel free mm. and the same time they actually like lead properly for the scene and for their character. I think, you know, more attention needs to be shift into like, no, the female, the women DP as well, and the women director. Because I think all of us, we have, uh, you know, story to tell. And uh, it's just that, you know, people that need to give us a chance. And a different perspective yes. to tell us. And from. a different perspective as yeah. well. And I think, you know, uh, there must be more trust from, you know, like the business side and just like give to the director women, you know, more power as well as if, you know, like, you know, they would give it to anyone else. Now, I, I support women in the business because I think that actually, like, you know, female is the future as well, actually is the present. But uh, I also support men because I have to be honest, those men, they, uh, th those are the ones that actually, like, you know, they really support me in a time where I was one of the few DP female mm -hmm. out there. And uh, because of them, actually was able to shoot it. 
So now the way I support women, I also support those like, you know, men that they really support women as well. So it's all a chain as well. Example, like, you know, lately I've been working with this wonderful director, you know, Deborah Kampmeyer, and we shot, you know, this movie is called Tape and with uh, Isabel Fuhrman. Can you tell us about uh, that in closing, even though we can't show a clip yeah, of it? Yeah, I know you cannot, post, but, but I wanted to really uh, say please, something no, about please, it. Please, please, please Because we, uh, we were so, like, uh, eager, and we were so, like, courageous in a way of using different media for different point of view. So we shot with an Alexia, and we shot it with button camera, we shot with surveillance camera. We were supposed to shoot in film, but we didn't have actually the means financially to do that. And uh, this is something that, you know, really should be stressed because it, the story was a very, very, very important story that was supposed to be told with a different media. And we really wanted to show that. So when I, you know, I say to Deborah, you know what, why don't we actually like, you know, have different like, you know, way of actually show the POV, the different point of view. And she was very open minded. And, you know, like the film was written like three years ago and yeah. uh, and also like, you know, we were supposed to shoot it two years ago and then it didn't go through because of the funds. This, but the story, what, briefly, the story is? The, the story is about actually producer that take advantage of an actress and uh, someone else spy on that, which is another actress because she went through the same situation and it's very like, you know, it's like a story of sexual aggression yes, or it's uh, a kind of, exploitation? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, uh, in which the timing mm, was just sort yeah, of like weird. Right. It and it's funny because we were supposed to shoot it like, you know, three years ago. And then because of the found, we had to actually stop. And then, you know, finally, uh, yeah. you know, Deborah got it and we, we shot it, you know, like uh, last year uh, in April, actually. And it was very intense because uh, it's uh, what I want to try to say is like, you know, give trust, you know, to the director women and give trust to producer women, but also like to DP women as well, mm. uh, because that's what is missing now. It's missing the fact that actually like, you know, they probably they don't trust us enough to do like, you know, bigger budget. But I think, you know, we show that we can do it and we can be on the same level with everybody else. Yeah. Terrific. Yeah. Well, thank you again. So thank you so for, much. For coming down. It was a pleasure. I really appreciate yeah. it. <laughs> Thanks. For a bonus segment of Valentina describing how she danced as she shot part of the Unstoppable campaign for Planned Parenthood, visit us on Instagram at Zeiss Full Exposure. Thanks for tuning in. Join us next time for another edition of Zeiss Full Exposure. If you can't watch, you can always catch the audio-only version on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you get your favorite podcasts. Follow us on Instagram at Zeiss underscore Full Exposure or on the web at ZeissFullExposure.com. And to learn more about the latest in Zeiss lenses, head to Zeiss.com. <laughs>